Hello and welcome to today's session. Uh, my name's Ian Vossa and we're going to be looking at uh, all about Google Sites getting ourselves sorted. I'm really pleased uh, that you've been able to log in. I've just uh, run back here to the kind of back area of uh, Tablet Academy Scotland to get myself uh, set up, ready to bring to you this session here. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed uh, the keynote session there. And if you haven't managed to uh, access that yet, then uh, make sure you go and uh, check check that out. So I'm going to just uh, pop in the site into the chat down here so you can go and uh, check that out and uh, access that if you need to, because all of today's recordings are available there and uh, all of the uh, sessions are recorded so you can watch again at a later date if you can't make them all uh, when you want to make them. So the next 40, 45 minutes, uh, I'm going to show you um, a little bit about Google Sites and how you can use that to create yourself uh, kind of easy school or class websites and uh, how you can share information and uh, um, make it a little bit interactive. I, I guess what's important to say is if you're watching this on uh, YouTube and you're wanting to uh, pop it out um, of the Google site so that you get access to the chat function, then uh, please do that. Um, or you can tweet me uh, at Mr. Vossa and uh, I've, I've got uh, Twitter open as well. So I can't look at everything all at once, but I will try my best to, if you've got questions to to spot them uh, as they're coming in. If you're uh, using um, Twitter, then please do um, uh, kind of pop in um, uh, using the hashtag uh, LDL2021 uh, to share your reflections, your thoughts um, of what, what's going on. So what we're uh, going to kick off with then uh, today is uh, first of all, looking at how we uh, access uh, Google Sites and get a little bit of an idea of, of, of how it works. So. Whew, I feel a bit, uh, a bit like I've uh, uh, brushed and, and flustered, but um, we're here, we're good. Everything's fine, we're, we're underway now. So I'm gonna bring my uh, screen in and you'll uh, see here, I'm just on the uh, Google homepage and I can see that I'm signed in on the uh, top right-hand side uh, because I've got a test account here, so I've got a, a, a T there for that. Um, now, if you're signed in with Glow, it doesn't actually show you that you're signed in when you're uh, on the homepage of Google, it just has the blue sign-in box. Um, but you will know that you're signed in because if you go in and access any of the other services that we have uh, access to, you'll then see your uh, usual profile picture and the and the Glow logo. Just doesn't just doesn't show you that on the on the home page. So um, we're going to start off by going into into sites here. Now this is a brand new account, so this is the first time uh, that I have uh, used Google Sites on on this uh, computer, and. Uh, Therefore, you'll get the experience that you would get, or you'll see the experience that you get if you're a first time uh, user. Hello, thanks very much for joining us. Questions in the chat, comments in the chat. Really love to have some uh, interaction. Uh, computing, same subject as me, fantastic. Uh, so we're going to just uh, head ourselves in here then. So what's nice is there is the ability to start a new site um, from a template. So you can have a look in the template gallery. Now, um, sometimes uh, the template gallery does change as it gets updated, and it can also be uh, updated as well uh, by the uh, domain that you're in. So if you're in, in the Glow domain, you might see some slightly different uh, templates uh, to being in a public domain. But if you've got a personal Google account, um, you can go and have a look at that and see the templates there as well uh, that work. So today, though, I'm just going to start off by creating a uh, blank site. So just click on that plus sign up there for the for the blank site. Okay, here is our uh, user interface. Let's have a look at uh, around the user interface and see how we go. So we've got on the right hand side here, the ability to be able to uh, add content and the content uh, looks um, really, really professional, really, really quickly. So um, I'll show how you can kind of build those simple but professional looking sites up uh, really quickly. Um, let's hit next on the tour here. We can easily move things around just by dragging and dropping, and I'm going to show you how that how that works as well. Of course, just like we have with all our Google tools, we've got the ability to collaborate uh, and work with other people, and I'll uh, show you how the revision history and that collaboration works. Uh, this is great if you've got groups of children you want to work together on making a site, or you've got groups of groups of staff as well, and I'll be showing you how both of those things uh, work. And then when you're ready to go, you've got the ability to be able to publish a website. I guess a couple of things to note here. Um, when you're publishing uh, as a member of staff, you have a choice 
to be able to restrict who you publish it to. You can publish it across your local authority, or you can publish it publicly through GLOW. Um, if you're a young person and you're accessing uh, via a student account, you just get the first two, the kind of option to restrict who sees it or being able to publish it to users in your local authority. And we will look at both of the settings of those things as we go. And that's the uh, that's the tour that Google Sites gives you, but I'm gonna give you a little bit more than that. Um, first thing that I think is always good to do when you start a new site is to um, stick in the top uh, left-hand corner at the name of the site. So I'm just gonna roll with LDL 2021. So, um, that you can see has uh, filled in uh, this area here, which is the kind of header at the top of my page. And the LDL site document name will be picked up for the title bar, as you can see here in my browser. Now, immediately, I've got the option to be able to add a logo. So I can go here and look at my brand images. So if I've got a logo, I can upload that from my computer and that will sit uh, just next to LDL 2021. And you also have the option to be able to upload something called a fave icon, a favorite icon. And you can see here that next to, in my top uh, left hand corner, next to the name of the website, I've got a little icon here. You can upload uh, an icon there. Now that needs to be uh, a square that's about 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Um, and that will give you the best view. Those people who know a little bit about pixels, you'll know that's not very much. So simple blocky graphics usually work best there with a a favorite icon, nothing uh, too complex or complicated. Well worth um, having an experiment because it really helps make a, a website look that little bit more professional if you've got a personalized logo and favorite icon there. Certainly one of the activities uh, I do with my uh, board general education uh, classes, look at a little bit of graphics alongside the uh, web development work. So that works uh, really nicely. Okay, let's have a little look more uh, at this main area of the page then. So this is the home page, I guess, that I wish to personalize because that's the first page people will uh, land on. But let's go over to the pages uh, area here and you can see here it is called my home page. Now down on the pages uh, option on the right hand side is the ability to add a new page. When you hover over that, you'll also see you have the option to be able to add a new link as well. Now I'll talk about the links a little bit later and uh, we'll just uh, stick up, stick with going with a uh, uh, a new page here, so just hit session one, done. So now I've got a couple of pages that I can uh, I can jump between, and you can see having added that second page, it's automatically given me a menu in the top right hand corner. So I've now got the home page, and I've also got the session one page, and it's put that header uh, in for me as well, that title straight into me. So going back to my home page, uh, I'm going to look here at the header type, and I can change what size I want. So actually, I quite like a nice big cover page to get started. That looks uh, that looks really good. Um, but actually, I don't really like how the text is looking and I don't really like the background. I don't really like the font. So let's first of all, change what the whole website's looking like by going to this themes option. So a theme is something that you can apply to every page of the website. You select the theme once and it will apply across all your pages, no matter whether you've got one page, two page or three pages. I've created a couple of pages just to just to show you how this will work. And uh, the themes are continually um, being added to, as well as the options within the themes as well. So let's go down to this impression theme. Uh, and then I can see here I can change the change the color scheme if I want to. But I'll stick with that kind of orangey red, uh, which uh, is very Tablet Academy Scotland. Um, and you can also uh, change the font as well. There are uh, more options, but we'll just uh, we'll just stick with what we've got available here for now. So, once I've uh, got that looking at how I want in terms of the theme, I can now concentrate a little bit more on the pages. So, as I said, when I change the theme, it's automatically updated uh, the, the the theme across all the pages. So here I am looking at the session one page now. I'm going to go to the insert menu. So the insert menu is where you're going to do most of your most of your builder. So I'm going to drag in here a pre-designed layout for me. And you can see when the layout comes in, just a single click and it just drops in. If I single click again, I can drop another one in. If I didn't mean to drop two in, I can just go over to the left hand side here and delete the section. So um, let's start putting some content in. There's a little plus 
icon here. If I press that plus icon, I get a choice of what I'd like to drop in. So I could upload something, I could select an image, um, I could find something from my Google Drive, like an Adobe PDF or some kind of um, some kind of other uh, document that I've got there, slides, doc sheets, anything that's in the drive can, can, can be displayed. Um, or I can add a YouTube video, which uh, is uh, particularly uh, powerful. So um, you can search YouTube as well. So I'm just going to hit in LDL 2021. Uh, Let's try that without the hashtag. Oh, I should have I should have tested that, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, this is interesting. I'm not getting any uh, YouTube videos appearing now. I said this was a new account. Let's just head ourselves to YouTube, and just make sure we've got YouTube working for the account. So that's good. Okay. Um, search from the hashtag LDL 2021 fantastic so this is live now easy school websites uh, we'll pause that because we won't want any feedback or anything uh, and what we can do is we can copy this URL and we can pop the URL in here just like so and it has found the video uh, we'll try the search again in, in just a minute um, just to see if we can uh, get that working I suspect because the account is new and hadn't used YouTube before uh, YouTube and uh, all the settings haven't propagated across, um, but now we've connected in. Hopefully, that will have made that happen. Uh, I can add in a title here Google Sites, and then this is a video all about Google Sites. And immediately, I've got something looking fairly professional, and I've literally just spent a few moments dragging and dropping uh, things in. Now, then, this header uh, image, if I don't like the header image, um, I can uh, upload from the computer or I can select a different image. The great thing about going to select a different image um, is I get a choice to choose from uh, the gallery provided by Google. If I've got my image saved somewhere at the URL, I can use that. I can search uh, Google Images um, and the search allows you to find images that are labeled for reuse and reuse with modifications as well. So you're able to use them um, without fear of um, breaching any copyright. If you've got um, any photo albums through Google Photos or images in Google Drive, you can access them as well. Looking then at the um, gallery here, I'm going to get this um, computer image here and hit select, and that will um, just drop in. Now, you'll have noticed this little icon here was kind of magicking away and this is making a readability adjustment. So obviously, when you've got an image behind and you've got some text in front, um, you can certainly find it can be a bit difficult to uh, uh, read text. If I turn that readability off, you can see the brightness of that computer with the um, white of the text makes it hard to read. Hit adjust to readability and it will automatically adjust it for you. If we go back to the home page here. You can see I've just changed the header image on the page that I'm working on. Now then, um, I can also change the header type. So at the moment it's on banner. If I just wanted the title only, I could remove that banner. Or if I liked the image and I wanted to make it a bit bigger, I could go for a larger banner. And that happens just like so. Okay, so we're slowly building up different elements. And I would certainly suggest when you're creating it, um, do, especially initially, do a little bit of um, the layout creation, then do a little bit of the theme creation, then do a little bit about dropping content in, and then tweak your layout again, because this is an iterative process, and you know, the speed of the tool and the ease to make changes means it makes sense to create it, look at it, make changes, uh, and and do it that way. As so spending a lot of time planning, and then um, trying to recreate your plan, you may as well look at what you can create using the tools that you have available. Now, one of the things I spoke about when I was uh, talking uh, in, in the keynote just there was about making sure that the resources that we create are accessible in terms of accessible uh, using a mobile device or on a tablet. We can, um, we can preview that just to see how we're going so far by using the preview button. When we access the uh, preview button, it loads up the page uh, that we're looking at 
and it gives us um, the ability and the option to be able to see what it would look like on different devices. So if I, I go down to the bottom right hand corner here, at the moment, I'm viewing it's what it's going to look like on a large screen. Now I'm sharing a pretty large screen with you, so everything is, is, is spaced out. Um, if I change this to the tablet edition, you can see this is what it would look like if somebody was uh, viewing from um, the tablet device. And then I can look again on the small mobile device. And I can see that across all three devices there, the site is looking pretty professional and I'm, and I'm happy with, with how it's uh, working. You can also go in and interact with the site. So we can go to the menu here and click home. Oh, OK, I need to spend a bit more time personalizing that, I've noticed. And I can go and see what that looks like on the tablet. And then back to the large device. Great. OK, so let's exit that preview for now. Let's give the uh, um, page a name here. Now, I've got a big cover header, but that doesn't stop me from taking a text box, single click, it will drop in. And I can write in here some information. So I'm, I'm doing a, a welcome. So I could give this a title and I could call uh, this Monday, 15th of February 2021. I hope everyone had a lovely uh, Valentine's Day uh, yesterday. Um, now, looking at that, that title, I might think that's actually a bit a bit big. I can make that a heading just like so. OK, yeah, I like that. And then I can drop another text box in underneath it. And um, this is all about the event. Now, you'll see here um, that there's a very faint line just where my mouse is. That might be quite hard for you to see. Um, but what you can do, and I think this is quite clever, because obviously there's quite a big gap here between the Monday text and the um, text I want to put underneath it. Grab that text literally just by clicking on it and holding your mouse button down and then just dragging it up and dropping it underneath. And you see here, this is joined those two bits of text together. Um, so if they're displaying on a mobile device, instead of having them sat separately, it will know they're related. So it will um, hopefully display them together or it will display them together uh, really nicely. Now, on the right hand side, let's uh, select ourselves an image to add. So I can use Google Images to search here. Um, let's search for a Chromebook. And uh, just take a Chromebook image that takes my fancy. Once again, we're searching uh, for images that have been labeled uh, as for reuse by uh, the Google search functionality. And I'm just going to drag that picture in here. And I've dropped it in, and it's automatically uh, resized. Let's say I want it a bit bigger and I, and I resize it like that. Now, there's a button here that um, allows you to uncrop the image because when you resize things, it can get slightly out of proportion. So use that uncrop button to fit it back to its original dimensions. Or if you do want to crop it, then hit the crop button and then you can do a bit of zooming or whatever you wish to do um, to, to make the difference there. On images, like you would have with pieces of text, you have the ability to be able to create links uh, to other websites or other pages on your website just by pressing the link button there. So I can put the link to this site, or I could just copy and paste a uh, URL in uh, just like that. So let's uh, let's go back. Oh, uh, so this is a very boring fact for you folks. Um, it does take uh, about 20 seconds for your messages to, to pop through to me. Uh, so if by all means ask questions as we go along and I'll uh, and I'll come back to them. Um, yeah, I think the spacing side of things is really powerful. Um, so absolutely um, do make use of the, 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 the spacing options. Very cool, very powerful. So I will uh, come to your comments as and when I see them. But uh, yeah, I might, I, might, I might be 30 seconds to a minute uh, behind uh, real life, but I'm happy to happy to jump back. Um, so what we've got here is we've got a section then that I'll be able to move around. So I'm going to uh, drop in some other layouts. So let's uh, stick in here. And this is the great thing as well, is you can drop these um, placeholder layouts in. You don't need to actually put any text in them. So if you know you're going to want to build the website, but you've maybe not got your photos yet, or you've not got all the text written, you can you can work on, on the design, and then you can go and drop in the other things. So quite often when I'm working with learners, I might have a group of people who are keen to create the content 
and then a group of people who are keen to make the design side of the website, maybe a, a group of people who want to do the multimedia elements of the website. So I let them go off and do their uh, different uh, specialisms. And you need to make sure that the teams are communicating so the people get the right number of images or they get the right amount of text. Uh, and they can they can show the, the site as it's been created uh, without any without any content in it. So that's that's really nice. And the content is super simple to to, to drag around. You also have the ability, as I showed you before, to drag things from from section to section as well. So that's uh, that looks really really nice. Okay, um, good. So we've started to to get the layout sorted uh, off of that page. So that's good. Right. Let's hit, hit ourselves to a, to a new page. And we'll call this one session two. Okay. Now, it's created underneath the home page. That's not where I want it to be. I wanted it to be under session one. So I literally pick it up, drag and drop it, and it automatically rearranges the menu for me uh, just like that. So super simple to do. And then I can go over and I can change the header type. I'll just go for the title this time. So that will give me uh, lots of space to, to, to work with. Going back to the insert option here. Um, I have the option to be able to put in some collapsible text. So I really like collapsible text. So uh, header, I text, those here. And I'm going to go up to the preview button again here, just so you can see what that looks like. So I've got the header, and by default, the text isn't being displayed. But if I click on the little uh, down arrow here, you can see my text goes here and obviously you have the text you want in there. Now, um, with the text option that we have here, the collapsible text, it is only collapsible text. So even though you can personalize that text and format it how you wish, you can't drop in um, an image uh, or a video into those uh, collapsible text se sections because the video and the text, uh, obviously, the video and the audio. <laughs> The image and the video aren't text. Okay. One of the things that I think is really powerful as well is the ability to be able to drop in an image carousel. So an image carousel lets you effectively create a really fancy uh, looking gallery. All you have to do there is hit the plus symbol and you'll get the option to add the image and you can either upload an image or you can select an image. So I can select that from the Google Drive from a URL, Google Images, or Google Photos. Google Photos isn't enabled within the Glow tenancy, so you won't be able to uh, make use of Google Photos. That, that won't load for you. Um, so in terms of uh, images, um, I can uh, stick with my theme of uh, looking at Chromebooks. And I can select the images uh, that, I, that I wish to drop in. Now, clicking on more than one at a time, gives me that option to be able to select multiple images so I don't need to keep going back into to, to doing it. I can just click through just like so. And once I've got all the images I want, I press insert. I can then double check that I'm, I'm happy with them. What's great for accessibility purposes is I've got the ability to add some text. Um, so this can be a caption underneath or it can be alternative text which can be read by a screen reader. And once I'm happy that I've got everything I wish it to, to do, maybe drag the images around so I get them in the order that I want. Perfect. And then I can just hit insert just like so. And here is the carousel. So if we go and look at the uh, preview, OK. And then as I hover over it, I get my arrow keys. And I also get the little buttons at the, the bottom here that I can uh, click on to move through the images. Now, I think that image is a bit pixelated. Um, I'm actually not really happy with the uh, aspect ratio of that. So I can go back in, go to my settings cog, and that image that I thought was a bit pixelated, I can just remove, hit update. And I can also have a look here at maybe making this, uh, this carousel a bit wider, just like so, and maybe just pulling it in a bit, a bit smaller as well. To, to film. So let's go back to the preview. Okay. I'm much happier with how that's looking this time. Let's see what that looks like on a mobile device. Oh yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be nice and easy for them. And tablet wise, yeah, super friendly there. So that's good. 
Um, of course, we can, uh, if we want to, kind of go by a, a kind of half page view. And if I want to drop some uh, text in, I can put that in on the right hand side as well. So I can have text here. And that looks that looks lovely. Okay. Um, now then, looking down on the right hand side here, what other things we've got? So you've got the option to be able to add buttons. So you might want a button that takes you to another website, or you might have a button that you want to do something um, special um, because you've written a little bit of code or something. If you kind of uh, remember the days when people used to personalize their Bebo sites using HTML and JavaScript, well, um, you can you can do a little bit of that if you want. Um, but also, if you if you don't want um, any pages to display in the menu bar, so if I go back to pages. Um, I can hide my pages from my navigation. Uh, can't hide the home page, obviously, because people need to be able to, to see a home page. Um, the URL will still work, even though the page is hidden from the navigation. So I can then use buttons to link to the page. If I go to the home page, scroll down, uh, insert myself a button. So uh, name of the button, uh, page one, and then with the link, Go to session one. Sorry, let's call that page session one. Insert the button, and that just drops in at the bottom. But as always, nice and easy to move things up. Uh, let's put another button in for session two link. Now you can copy a URL into this link box. Um, there you go. Put that up here. Now then, this is the nice thing. I said you could drag things around. Um, there you go. Drag around nice and easily, and that's literally just picking up with my mouse click. Uh, dragging it and then dropping it. Um, so let's go and preview that again. So you can see I've got no menu now. But I do have the buttons here for session one and session two. Interesting, when I preview that in the um, tablet edition, you can see how I've actually lost some of the text there. I can see here about previewing the site builder, absolutely. Um, much better than, you know, keeping everything in one browser window. So I think that's great for, for staff making uh, a school website or a class website, but I also think it's, it's, it's great for young people when they're working just to keep everything together. So with those buttons, if I wanna go back and edit them a bit more, I can just go in and I can just click them a bit wider. And you can see when I'm dragging and dropping, so I've got some very faint guidelines appear. Just follow those guidelines to try and keep things at the same size or, or balanced. Uh, <laughs> I like things to be aligned uh, neatly. So let's go back in now and, and preview that on the tablet. I've now got session one and session two appearing nicely and they're being stacked on the mobile device. Uh, so I'm really pleased now with how that looks. Now, the reason you might want to hide pages from the navigation, uh, if you're doing some kind of um, internet searching challenge or some kind of escape room type challenge, um, if I um, publish the website, I'll come back to come back to explaining how that how that works with the with the hidden menu. But for now, let's put a, a new page in called uh, session three. Take that down again, so I've got that at the bottom, and uh, change my header type to title. That's good. Looking at things I can insert: so docs, slides, sheets, forms. Uh, the Google site for today was uh, made uh, using Google Sites. Um, if you haven't accessed that already, uh, then uh, please do. And you will find that we had a button for the registration uh, and we had a button um, to see the agenda. Uh, that there gives you a link in to what a register form looks like uh, if, you, if you haven't seen it. So that might be something that people are using to use as a daily check-in with classes, uh, for example. If you made charts in, in Google Sheets and you want to display any data, that's what the chart option is for. Okay, scrolling back up then, I've kind of shown images and drives being dropped in, so I'm, I'm happy with all of that. So let's just uh, look here at a table of contents. So the table of contents is really useful if you're going to make a page which has got quite a lot of content um, and you want people to be able to access that content easily. So I've put in my table of contents content and then I'm going to drop in some text. So um, let's call this part one. 
I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to give that a heading just like so. And then going to just stick in a layout underneath part one. And I can, uh, oh no, that's a, that's a whole layout I'd have to, let's stick in a uh, placeholder. Perfect. Pop that placeholder underneath. That's good. And then I can pop in some uh, text as well. That's fine. You can make, gosh, that was big, that placeholder, wasn't it? You didn't need to be that big. Um, right, I'm going to change my layout just slightly there, I think. Let's uh, delete that bit there. So if they ever drop a bit in that you don't wish to have, just click on it and then use the delete button there. Okay, that's that's fine. I like that placeholder. Part one, and then I've got some information that's going underneath. That could be text, that could be images, that could be a video. What we're going to do uh, next is stick in another text box, drop that down underneath, call this one part two, highlight it, and make that a heading as well. And I will drop in... Uh, there you go, that's better. Uh, another text box, part three, make that a heading. And I can pop in something like that. Perfect. At the top here, with my table of contents, I've now got links to all three of the pages. So I could put in a quick links. And then I've got myself this quick links section as well. So let's um, preview that and see what it looks like. So if they're on a mobile device and I've got three quite hefty sections or more on a page I want to be able to access, uh, click on part three and it will uh, jump down um, to the bottom part of the page. When you're in preview mode, that, that doesn't work because you, none, of, none of the links work uh, in preview mode, but when we look at the uh, final edit, that will be working uh, just fine. So table of contents is really useful to be able to get pages which have got lots of text in them neatly broken up. Okay, let's look at some settings of the uh, site then uh, before we move to publishing it. Um, so going into the settings option here, we've got ourselves um, a choice of where we put our navigation. So we can have our navigation at the top or we can move it to the side. I'll leave it to the side for now because uh, then you'll be able to see what that looks like. The branding for the logo and the favorite icons we've already looked at. These viewer tools, uh, these settings are worth changing. Um, show when the page was last updated. Um, I usually recommend switching that off unless you've got information that's particularly time sensitive and you want people to know when it was last updated. Um, otherwise, you know, you can end up sharing a site that is maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit dated. Um, a contact form, I would uh, remove the, the contact form um, information as well. If you want to have a contact form, I would create that uh, yourself because then you've got more control over it. Um, this option here, which is the anchor links, absolutely leave that on and I will show you what the anchor links look like. If you're into your Google Analytics, uh, you can add that information here to find out uh, who's visiting your website, how long they're spending looking at it, um, and some of their kind of key characteristic information. Uh, that can be particularly interesting. Of course, if they're accessing it through a, a Glow account, um, much of that information isn't available because that's a G Suite for Education account and G Suite for Education doesn't use any tracking type cookies uh, for, for young people, obviously because of the privacy aspects. And we've also got the option uh, at the top to be able to put uh, an announcement banner. So um, you can turn that on and I'll just put a message at the top saying, uh, hello, let's make the banner uh, black. Uh, so it will really stand out and visibility across all pages. Close that. There we go, there's my banner up there. Now, uh, if I want other people to be able to um, edit the site and they'll be able to live edit at the same time as me, and just like all of the G Suite and all the Google products, it will update really nicely and really quickly. So what we want to do is just go to, um, let's stick in an account, so I'll just uh, add another account here. You can choose whether the person's notified or not, and you can choose whether they are a viewer or an editor. 
So uh, I'll leave uh, this account as an editor and I'll uh, share to another account and I will um, make this a, a viewer. So this means that I've got different people with different levels of access being able to see the site or be able to see the site and edit it. Now, I spoke about being able to make uh, changes for the site when it's published to be viewable to everyone. If we go down here and select the links section, the draft, the version that we're working on in terms of being able to edit and change it, I would always leave that as restricted. Um, I think it would be very rare that you would want everybody within a local authority so that this is a test, test domain, uh, a test school. So that's um, why that's got my name there. Um, you might want people across the local authority to be able to edit a website, um, but you certainly wouldn't want anyone with a link to be able to go in and, and edit it. I, I do understand why it's there, but not an option I think most people would need to use. So I'd leave the draft as restricted. And then the published site, you can make it um, restricted. So just the people who you've got identified can view the site. You can make it viewable across your school or local authority, selecting the option there, and that will be replaced with your school or local authority's name or you'll be able to go uh, and make it public for anyone to be able to access. Or if you want to remove the website altogether, just hit that remove link option. Um, I'll be able to make this uh, public. And if I hit done, there we go. Okay, let's go then to, to publishing it and uh, looking at it. So hit the publish uh, option. Uh, I then need to give it a web address. Uh, and then that gives me what the URL is going to be underneath. Uh, if I highlight that uh, slowly and carefully, I'll be able to copy that and I'll drop that into the chat for you in a second. Um, and uh, you can choose whether or not you want your uh, site to be picked up by search engines. If you don't want it to be uh, public, then you can obviously uh, tick that box there. I don't think we want this to be displayed, so I'll, I'll tick that box there. And then we hit publish. It takes a few moments uh, for the site to publish. Once it has been published, we can go in and we can view it. Um, I'll drop the link in there. If you want to go in and have a look at it, you're, you're more than welcome to, to go and have a, have a click around and see what it looks like on your device. Uh, it, was, it was quickly put together, so um, it, don't be too harsh in your criticisms. Uh, so here we are on the home page, and you can see here I've got the options to jump to those hidden pages. And you can see here I've got the URL up here. So I spoke about being able to create some kind of escape room challenge. You can have a page with a riddle or a quiz or a question, and then you can get them to guess the answer by typing in uh, their, their answer into the end of the URL. So for instance, if the answer to the riddle transpired to be session one, and I hit enter, it's taking me to the session one page, but there's no menu to that. Let's say they guessed wrong though and put in session four, I just get the 404 page, but I still have the feeling of being within the site so that they can then have a have another guess. So people are wanting to build their own escape room challenges. I think using Google Sites is a really nice way of doing that. And the children can guess by guessing at the end of the URL bar. And um, if people want some more information about that, let me know and I'll do a, a separate demo um, of, of how that works and, and how it looks. Now then, I said uh, we've got the uh, digital learning site um, that is being used for today. Um, and that was the form example that we uh, had. So I'm going to link to that website using uh, my site. I just need to uh, find the URL. Let's uh, grab the leaders of digital learning URL. Fantastic. Go to my pen icon in the bottom right hand corner here to edit this site. And I'm going to go to the pages tab. I'm going to add myself a new link. The name is going to be LDL 2021 site. And I'm going to copy and paste the URL in. I can choose whether or not it opened in a new tab. So that's a new browser tab up here, like with this YouTube tab that I've got open. Um, or I can get it to open the same tab and replace my website. I always like to get people to open a new tab so they can easily come back to the site they were looking at. Publish my change. This is lovely. Now I've made a change to my website. It gets me to review those uh, changes to see whether or not I want them to be uh, published. If I'm happy with the changes, I can just hit, hit publish there. Fantastic. Okay. 
that's published. Let's go and uh, view the published site. I can go up here and hit view published site. I can also re review changes. So if I've got people who I've got as editors, but I've not given the ability to publish, then I can go in and review their changes. LDL site, so I've linked to another Google site. Now, when people are looking at building quite big, complex school websites, you could have a series of 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 different sub-sites, and you could link all those sites together, meaning you could have one person responsible for the main school website, and then each class, if it was a primary school, or each faculty or department could have their own websites, and you could all interlink to each other's using combination of the uh, navigation bar uh, that you've put on the left-hand side or along the top, or uh, using buttons as well. And that means different sites can have different levels of access for different people. So if you had a young person um, leading the learning somewhere and you wanted them to have a website, then they could have access to just that site area. Um, there's some really nice examples of uh, school websites uh, across Scotland already that have been made using Google Sites. And the great thing is, is it's free to use and you can create as many websites uh, as you wish. Now, last thing I was going to show you in terms of um, the anchor links, which is quite nice if I click here on uh, the session three. If I scroll down to part three here and I just hover over part three, you can see here I get this little link icon. This is the link to an anchor link. Click on the anchor link and then you can share that with people. So I'll drop that into the chat for you. And if you click on that link, it will take you directly to part three in the website. Let's demo how that happens. So that it's easy to be able to direct people to specific content on a website. So there you go. If you've got any questions, then please do um, drop them in the chat for me. Um, I'll uh, keep talking for a few more minutes just while I wait for them to come in. Thanks very much uh, for joining me with this introduction to Google Sites. I really hope it, it's kind of showing you how you can start off by creating a site, uh, looking at the different layouts that are available and being able to drop in placeholders, inserting images, YouTube videos. Um, I obviously didn't demonstrate how to import things from Drive, um, but it's exactly the same thing, slides, docs. And you've got lots of control as well with the slides and docs. So for instance, you can get the slideshow to automatically present. We can have videos uh, start playing for you. You're just about you know making changes to those pages to get them personalized to look at how you want them to do you've also got the option if you've got some uh, code from other services to be able to embed those services into into youtube as well so absolutely uh, do that preview your website to make sure it's looking how you want it to look so you can create it on the tablet you can create it on a mobile phone you can uh, create it on a big pc and whatever it's being viewed on the users are getting the same uh, excellent experience. Um, and then finally, you know, go out, share it, put it into the hands of learners, because ultimately we want them to be watching it, uh, using it, interacting it, to be able to, um, you know, reach its full potential. Uh, there's plenty more uh, sessions on today. I've already dropped into the chat uh, plenty of times uh, the, the different <laughs> activities uh, that are going on today and the links to the site to all the different workshops. Uh, and there's obviously four other workshops on at the moment uh, that you can go and check out if you if you haven't already. Um, so, you know, do follow the links uh, and interact with those. Great for people who are watching as well to uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, Twitter. And if there's more kind of webinars or information that you're looking for, Tablet County Scotland are, uh, are committed with Google for Education to putting uh, more uh, supports out there that, that people want. So um, do let us know what you think would be useful and. Uh, We'll see if with those partnerships we can uh, get them delivered. And uh, I very much look forward to seeing people at half past 10 at the next session. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, bye for now.